Hi guys, welcome back. Uh, my name is Steve, I'm down here with Fitness HQ uh, and today's session we're going to be looking at level 2 nervous system. Uh, again, like the other units, this is also going to link into the level 3 sports massage units as well, so you know it's going to link across nicer there. Uh, hopefully it's going to help you give, get, get a little bit of revision in on the nervous system itself. Uh, as always, we've got our aims and objectives here, so feel free to have a, a, a closer look at these if you want to. Uh, we're going to crack straight on though into the, the actual function of the nervous system itself. Um, as you can see here, it's sort of like the main communication centre throughout the body. It uses electrical impulses to get rapid messages um, up and down the body to different cells uh, for, for our everyday activities, um, everyday life really. Um, so it's responsible for maintaining homeostasis. Um, and homeostasis is a, is a sort of a posh word for um, our, all of our sort of internal environment being in equilibrium to our surroundings. Um, so, you know, we're in a, a neutral area in the middle. Um, and also, like I said, it, it gives us that electrical stimulus. Generally, what we're going to focus on a lot is, is for muscle contraction as well. Uh, and we'll get into a little bit more detail on those electrical signals and, and how then messages get to our muscles later on. Um, the structure of the nervous system is split into two divisions though and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain a little bit more um, on here. So our, our main division, uh, we've got our central nervous system as you can see on the board. So it's often abbreviated as to the CNS. Uh, this is like the control hub, this is where all of the analysis takes place. It's like you know, the head office of, of the gym or you know, the, the main sort of analysis uh, data area. Uh, and the, the CNS comprises of the, the brain and the spinal cord. Um, and then from that, all the branches off the spinal cord uh, go to what we call the peripheral nervous system or the PNS for short. So the peripheral nervous system, and that branches out, as you can see from the diagram, to all the different areas of the body, uh, down to our limbs, down to all of our cells, basically, to allow messages to get there very, very quickly. Um, now with the CNS, we can, we can split it up into two different subsections, uh, depending on how our brain needs to send the signals. Now, we've got what's known as a somatic response. Now, a somatic response is whereby we have conscious control over that response. Now, the, the obvious example here is our skeletal muscles. So, if I want to pick up this pen, yeah, I will consciously think about picking up that pen. Yeah? So, it, it's, all, it's all a voluntary process, basically. Um, now, the other side of that is uh, where we don't have conscious control. So, we're talking about uh, cardiac muscles, we're talking about smooth muscle. Uh, we call this the autonomic response. whereby we know we don't have any conscious control over this particular subsection of the nervous system. So all these signals are being sent without any thought process going behind. Um, and the autonomic nervous system, as I mentioned, with the blood vessels of the heart, it can be then split into two more subcategories. So we've got a sympathetic response, Now, sympathetic response is where the nervous system starts to speed up all the cells in the body. So it, it, it speeds up like a heart rate, uh, blood flow around the body, our breathing rate, things like that. And it, 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 you could say it gets us ready for, for exercise. Um, you'll, you'll feel it sometimes if you're on the start of a race line, for example, or the start of a competition, and you get that sudden sort of heart rate going up, that rush of blood. Uh, around the body, that's the sympathetic nervous system, and it essentially it's getting you ready for the activity that you're doing. Now, conversely to that, you've got the parasympathetic response. So, parasympathetic, if you think parachute, uh, it slows you down. Uh, so, with this one, uh, it does the opposite really, the sympathetic nervous system. So, let's take the end of a competition or a race, whatever it might be, uh, your body will start to slow down the cells uh, and you will almost, it, will, it will get you back to more normal resting figures 
that your body would be used to. And again, both of these are maintaining homeostasis throughout for whatever it is the activity that you're doing, whether you're starting or during or after an event. Uh, these two phases will make sure that your body is in the correct place. Uh, so that all happens through the, the central and the peripheral nervous system. Like I said, this is like the main hub that, that controls what happens through the CNS. Uh, and there's a little bit of uh, what I just mentioned up on the board for you there as well. Uh, so the role, um, you, could, you could almost say that you've got um, three roles to the nervous system. And the way I'm going to demonstrate this generally is through, through this pen. So all I'm going to do, throw it up, catch it, and go caught it. Um, that's all three of these roles taking place. Uh, let's talk through what just happened then. So uh, we've got the pen, we've got my eyes, and we've got the brain and spinal cord as well. So as I throw the pen up, my eyes are looking at its, its speed, it's looking at the size, the weight, all these things is gathering information here. So this is like our, our sensation um, uh, point, yeah? So we've got all of our different external senses uh, that are detecting all of the external environment. Uh, so as the pen is thrown up, I'm looking at it. It's sending that message to the brain, to the CNS. Um, that's going to analyse all this information and it's going to help then send out a response whereby my arm comes out and I, my muscles allow me to basically grab the pen and that would be the response. So we've got sensation, we've got analysis of the information and then we've got a response usually through muscular contraction. Uh, and that is essentially uh, these three stages summed up through just simply catching the pen. The easy as that. Um, here's just a few sort of... Um, lines for you to look at as well, pretty much just backing up what I mentioned about the three roles. Um, you've got a nice little diagram here, probably a little bit better than mine as well, explaining it for you. So we've got the, the, the receptors here, um, i.e. our eyes. Now, in our eyes we have what's called a sensory neuron um, and this is what starts off the, the signals. Uh, that sensory neuron pass, passes that information to, to either you know, the spine or the the, the brain um, to, to analyse at this point here um, for our associated neuron uh, and from that we then uh, get a response via a motor neuron so motor means movement so this is effectively going to our muscles um, and it's going to allow for the muscles to move to contract to be in the right place in order to catch the pen so nice little diagram there for you um, now uh, every single Motor neuron generally is, is, is hooked up uh, as a motor unit. What I'll do is I'll come back to this slide in a second. I'm just going to look, talk you through what the motor neuron is. So as you can see from this slide here, um, we've got a nice diagram, much better than I'd be able to draw on the board. Um, we've got the, the cell body up here, so the main cell body. Now branching off from that, we've got all these what we call dendrites. So I like to think of these as like the, you know, like a TV antenna, for example. So they're picking up a signal, so they're dragging this signal in into this cell body, and then the cell body regulates this information. It sends it down this nice long passageway here called the axon. Um, now surrounding the axon, we have um, these little yellow sections here are called the myelin sheath. Uh, this is just a bit of fat, uh, saturated fat that surrounds the axon and it allows for faster, for speedier transmissions. Uh, and the axon will then break off, branch off, and it will go to lots of different individual muscle fibres. Um, at the fibres we have what's called the neuromuscular junction, which is essentially where the nervous system links to the muscular system. Um, in this particular case, the muscle fibres. So that's the, the neuron. Uh, now if I go back to this slide here, you can see the, the motor unit itself. Now the motor unit consists of the neuron and all of the fibres in which it attaches to. So you can see here this particular um, axon, this neuron, is coming down, it's attaching to a bunch of different fibres. Now a, a motor unit can generally consist of five muscle fibres, or it can have up to a thousand muscle fibres, it generally depends on the type of muscle, uh, the type of movement and the force that that muscle generally needs. So for example, 
motor units in my fingers are going to be much smaller and contain less fibres because they're only really going to do small, fine, acute movements. Whereas, let's take my, my quadriceps, for example. These are much larger muscles, need a lot more force. So each motor unit is going to need to attach to lots more fibres in order to produce that movement. So, obviously, um, each muscle will have you know, a set amount of motor units that it would attach to. Um, now, uh, every motor unit um, follows what we call the all or none law, whereby if the CNS decides it wants to activate that motor unit, um, every single fibre within it will contract at a maximum effort. So if it requires five units, all of those fibres will contract. If it requires 50 units, it will allow all 50 units to contract. So if I'm doing like a heavy squat, my body's going to activate as many units as possible in order to do the lift. Um, if I'm doing, pick up this pen, I'm not going to need many motor units to produce a small movement. So it kind of depends on the force that you need um, to the units that you require. Um, now, the, the funny thing is with motor units is that sometimes your, your body can almost trick itself. Uh, so let's say I put this chair here. And I've analysed this chair to be really heavy. So I'm, my, my, my brain is going to fire up lots and lots of motor units. It's going to think I'm going to need a lot of force to pick this up. So I go down, I activate all these units. And then I pick it up really, really quickly. Make myself look a bit of a fool. Because uh, it's a lot lighter than I expected it to be. Um, that's a case of where you, 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 you can, it can almost get tricked out a little bit. Now, in reality, I know that this chair is, is relatively light. So uh, what happens is my body produces the right amount of motor units and I pick it up without flying backwards. Um, now, take it from a beginner's perspective. Um, if we're in the gym using weights, now a beginner's not really going to understand what the weights are, what 10 kilo weight is, what 20 kilos is. So when they're picking things up, it's going to be staggered. Uh, if we take a bench press, for example, it might the bar might come down like this, go back up like that, because the body's not used to re recruiting the right amount of motor units. Um, whereas someone who's uh, seasoned, more intermediate, advanced, they'll be able to do movement much more fluent because the, the CNS, the, the brain, is, is requiring the right amount of motor units, producing the right amount of force to make that nice, smooth and efficient movement. Um, now your body's also pretty good at protecting itself as well, so the, the, the more sort of beginner stage you are, the less motor units you'll, you will be able to use. It's protecting you, so you've got tendons that are maybe a little bit fragile, um, your, your body will, will naturally not recruit enough motor units so that you're not going to do any damage to yourself. Uh, you might see it from certain gym fails out there where someone has a bench press, comes down and they can't get it back up. Uh, that's a, a, a classic example of you not recruiting the right amount of motor units to produce that movement and as a result you look a little bit silly when you've got to start shouting for help because there's no one around. Um, so that's a little bit on motor units. Um, quite cool and can manipulate quite a lot through exercise as well. Uh, this is just stating the all or non law as well, which is what I've just gone over. Each, each neuron will, will fire up all of the units. Uh, think of it as a light bulb as well, it's either on or it's off. Uh, motor unit recruitment then. So, good little example here of um, force production. Now, if I only need a small amount of force, I might only produce that one unit. Uh, if I then need to lift up a heavier weight, for example, I might need two units, so the amount of force production is higher. And then, linking on with that, if I need even more force, I might have three motor units produced. Uh, going back to the chair example, the heavier the chair, the more motor units I'll need to recruit. Um, and then down here, it's just mentioning about uh, beginners in particular might not be able to recruit as many. Um, and um, summing that up, uh, that's pretty much everything on the nervous system. Um, I think we've got a few um, quiz questions for you to have a go at. Again, if you've got any questions in regards to the nervous system, 
feel free to comment below and I'll get back to you with some answers. Cheers guys.